Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Flying Circus, Flight Hazards Special, where I talk about the planes in the book. Let's get going with more horrible planes, starting with the Rath Na 6F, held together with shoestring budget, and literal shoestring. Roll, gun carrier, served with, Machi Republics, first flight, 1580, strengths, big cannon, weaknesses, structurally questionable. The period before the common proliferation of the interrupter gear was strange indeed, everyone knew the age of armed aeroplanes was coming, but what role they would play was a matter of pure speculation, military planners envisioned planes with steel claws, metal attack propellers, and clouds of air-to-air -air flechettes. By these standards, the Rath Na 6F was both very restrained and could have been revolutionary. The designers struck early upon the concept of fixed forward guns to allow the pilot to aim the entire plane, and mounted a heavy repeating cannon to shoot down observation balloons and airships. Unfortunately for Rathena, absolutely no part of the plane's creation went smoothly. The promising lead designer died in a freak tennis accident with the plans half finished, and many of the omissions were copied whole cloth, resulting in a first generation aircraft lacking ailerons. When this was corrected and the plane allowed to bank, it promptly used this newfound maneuverability to pull the fragile spinner mounted tail off and crash through the greenhouse of the governor's palace, similar fates befell the next dozen prototypes. They finally got the tail to stay on just in time for the advent of the Cobra MA to make it worthless. So, good news, you got a big heavy repeating cannon, bad news, the plane could barely carry it and it's just sluggish as hell, slow as hell, fragile as hell, and you only get 5 shots, so don't miss. If you do hit, most things will be completely gone, and it has enough fuel to go anywhere, plus it's stable, somewhat reliable, and has good visibility, but you might have a question, why is it so fragile? This, is why. Like its real-life counterpart, the RAF FE-3, a British plane, this plane was made at a time where interrupter gear didn't exist yet, so the only way to put hull-mounted gun forward is to have the engine mounted at the rear, that's not a bad idea, the bad idea is to then support the entire tail with the structure going through the engine only, with a spinning propeller around it. You might also notice that there's four strings supporting the tail, and probably are the only thing holding it together, the high tension going through those wires can really only be described as Cuban Missile Crisis or Lesbian. Honestly, if you want big firepower to bring down an airship, just get a cheap rocket carrier, those are far more reliable and once you dump the weight, you can fly far more freely, or just get the Ogre which is far more expensive but definitely worth its price. There's no variant for this plane. Next up, we have the Mitcher IGJZ-80, I got no punchline, look at this fucking thing. Roll, gun carrier, served with, UWF, first flight, 1580, strengths, recoilless cannon, weaknesses, sublimely unstable. Conventional wisdom would say you should keep the back blast area of a recoilless cannon free of any part of your aircraft you wish to keep, luckily for you, this is the sort of inside the box thinking which would prevent you from doing something like designing the MiG JZ-80. The original idea was not entirely terrible, the primary role envisioned by sensible people for armed aircraft in the pre-war era was shooting down airships and observation balloons, and a heavy recoilless cannon was ideal. Unfortunately, actually mounting the thing in a single engine plane was an engineering challenge. Mitcher was boldly not up to the task, they wisely positioned the propeller behind the gun, where it would be blown off by the back blast rather than the shell. They then added an increasingly complex series of baffles and, after several crashes, replaced the lead balls launched from the rear with an equal mass of magnesium sulfate. This post-war refit has traded up its engine for something which can take some abuse, with the minor sacrifice of becoming nearly uncontrollable. A brief reminder that recoilless cannon is recoilless by ejecting a countermass at its rear, can you start seeing the problem? Worse, the recoilless cannon in Flying Circus is partially based on the very first functional recoilless cannon, the David gun, which instead of just injecting hot gas that can give you third degree burns, it has a load of lead balls as the countermass, the plane is effectively getting shot by a 12 pounder grape shot every time it fires the gun, a problem the real life version, the AD Scout, also a British plane, keeps suffering from and it's why they are never in service, thankfully. Also thankfully, this problem is mostly solved, unfortunately, the cannon only has three shots, use them wisely, also I'm genuinely baffled that somehow, Despite everything, the plane has enough spare mass for a light machine gun. You would think they would put that mass into more ammo, but maybe the plane itself just cannot handle more than 3 rounds. It's also quite slow, but at least its handling is decent with its rotary engine, and it has quite a bit of power to boost and climb with its engine, 
it's also decently tough, and has good visibility with all its wings behind the pilot seat. Unfortunately, there's also another problem, this plane is so forward and top heavy that its stability can only be described as bochi, but hey, if you crash one, you can cheaply buy another one, you just need to walk away from it. There's actually variants for this plane, such as the original which has the less powerful Schreiber G9 engine as well as having the extra LMG removed, this result in a plane that's slightly slower, but probably more survivable with far higher stability, and also way cheaper, the Ritter Calibri variant on the other hand replaced the engine with Scholl's Lux X, resulting in a plane that's slower, cheaper, and also more stable. You might think that these two planes are far superior than the newer retrofitted version, but there's a catch, the slowest commercial airship used by just about everyone in Himmelgard has a max speed of 13, meaning these two variants will not be able to catch any airship unless by surprise, and even then they could quickly lose their targets. Next, we have the Meyer Überflieger, a strangely shaped oven. Roll, tall tail, served with, beer, first flight, 1586, or was it 85, I don't fucking know, strengths, innumerable, weaknesses, the hangover. Conventional history will tell you that Hugo Benhold built the first all-metal plane in 1589, hoping to build an invincible plane that would make air war impossible. If you ask Friday Man Meyer, noted denizen of the bar at Mike Seidel's trading post in Voisin, the first all-metal plane actually flew in 1586. He'd know, he built it. According to his story, which you can hear by buying him a beer or, honestly, just waiting 10 minutes, Meyer built his superior metal plane in a barn with his mates from 1584 to 86, or possibly 85, the date wanders with retellings, sourcing parts from a variety of unlikely sources ranging from dragon hide to meteoric iron to anachronistic broken down tanks. The plane could outturn a Singbogel, outshoot a ogre, and certainly ram into one of Hugo's fakes and tear it in half. If you buy him a second drink, he'll tell you the bigwigs from the old kingdom, back when the world made sense, were very interested in his plane and paid unlikely sums of money for the design, which he used to buy war bonds and which, by the goddesses, he'd get paid out one of these days, just you watch. While you may have your doubts, a handful of Myers planes have shown up over the years, usually pulled from the cities. While they do superficially match his description, the fact the tiny air-cooled rotary engine has no airflow in the sealed metal tail calls into question the stories of its performance, and most of their users quickly trade them in for something less likely to crash and burn. In fairness, however, these copies probably weren't built to the same standard as the original. The Meyer Überflieger is based on the very real Veyman W1, a French full metal disaster that is technically the world first full metal plane, built in autumn 1915. Yes, the wiki page just said autumn, I can't get a more specific date. The main problem with the Veyman was that it decided to use a rotary engine, an air cooling engine mind you, and then encased it in METAL BOXES and gave it a tiny intake to get fresh air in. It's not remotely enough and the plane basically cooked itself, and probably the pilot too, this issue ultimately doomed the plane and the program was abandoned in December 1915. On 12th of December, 1915, the Junkers J1, the plane Hugo's Gans Metal Wunderflugsjug is based on, took flight without issue and made history. So, what about the actual plane, even putting aside the severe engine issue, this plane is slow, painfully slow, heavy bomber can outrun it slow, it's also extremely unstable and can crash at any moment, but thankfully, it's pretty tough, it might even be tough enough to survive a crash on its own, the survivability of the pilot is another case however, but even in this aspect, it loses out to the Wunderflugsjug. The only winning point it has over its rival that doesn't even notice its presence is its handling with rotary bonus, and having double the firepower in the form of two scatter guns, probably because it's so slow, there's no way it can catch up to anything reliably. So, how do you use this thing, simple, sell it to a person you want dead, and wait for it to return to earth when they fly it? Reliability minus 6 is, pain, the only thing that has worse reliability is the Ritter Model X Fock, and this image should explain everything. Also, it's rather expensive for its performance, which is just mediocre. There's no variant for this plane. Last one for this episode, we have the Mark Grafrath and Osecutor, the perfect example of too many cooks spoil the broth. Roll, disputed, served with, matchy and sop with, first flight, 1587, strengths, versatility, weaknesses, capability. After decades of being fierce rivals in the Northeast, the Kingdom of Sopwith and Machi Republics attempted to put their differences aside in the 1580s in light of the looming threats on the continent, 
This was not a smooth process. Among the provisions of their early agreements was a technology sharing initiative and attempt to standardize bomber designs, this international bomber would allow the two nations to pool resources in the notably expensive field, this decent theory turned into a monumental boondoggle which nearly sunk the entire alliance with the scale of the scandal. Originally a collaboration between SFW and Rathena, the SFW slash Markgraf merger resulted in a complete shakeup of the engineering team. Markgraf assumed the forward defensive turret made it a gunship, and insisted on a raised pulpit for better fields of fire. The added weight meant a reduction in bomb load, but matchy brass infatuation with the bomb tunnel shape meant the hollow section stayed, only half filled. Overpriced and barely able to fly, the resulting shambles was briefly adopted due to blatant bribery and nepotism, to much public outcry. Both nations quietly retired it as they entered the war. Based on the Lloyd 40.08 looked Kreutzer, an Austro-Hungarian nightmare, the secutor really has no idea what it is made for, it's a heavy bomber with only eight massive bomb, it's also a gunship that only has four light machine guns in every direction, it's honestly a plane that would work better if it's cut into three or four planes. However, it is quite fast as a heavy bomber, which it technically is one, and is in fact the most agile of them all, so it has the highest chance to turn the table against its attackers. But also at the same time, this is like saying that an adult can totally drop kick a small child, it's technically true, but also that's not something to be proud of. And just to make this plane seems even more fucked up, this is the only plane in flying circus thus far to be powered by two different types of engines at once, which the real life version also do. Honestly, just think of the secutor as a giant Mark Grifzer Storer B, that's also way more expensive than it should be, and has more corpses on board when it falls apart. There's no variant for this plane. And that's all on these four airplanes, from the heavily armed Rathena 6F that's barely holding itself together, the scientifically misunderstood Mitcher IGJZ-80 that barely avoids shooting itself into pieces, the overheating Meyer Uberflieger that is best flown while drunk, and the heavily disputed Mark Graf Rathena Secutor that has no idea what it is doing and so am I. Anyway, that's all for now, there's still the finale to go, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.